Hello Physics 20s. I want to talk about two source interference today and I want to show you the the symmetrical pattern that you need to be familiar with. Uh, there's quite a bit of detail to understanding this pattern but the math is you'll see in the end is really really simple but um, the picture to get to that math can have some complexity so I'm hoping we can clear that all up today. I have here um, an animation I just want to run for you. Um, this is a single source of continuous waves. And I'm just going to run it right here for you. I've slowed down the simulation so you can see this. But if you look at the screen here, this is showing uh, like a continuous um, frequency that's disturbing, say, the surface of water. OK, so it's like we're dropping a pebble into the, like a whole bunch of pebbles into the water at a certain rate, but that's not really that realistic. It's maybe more, I, I even think of like a massager, you know, if you've seen those little, uh, like a hand massager or something, if you could imagine that just touching the surface of the water and it's just going to hit it at a constant frequency, you'd produce something like this. Um, I guess it would look like this from the side. Whoops, I actually messed that up here. Um, oh yeah, yeah, we're still good. So um, if it if we run it from the side, it would look something like this. So you'd have a disturbance and the waves would propagate outwards. Now in this simulation, it doesn't show any reflection at the end. It's, it's actually a little bit of, it gets really crazy if there's reflection on the in the four corners on the sides. Um, but we're not gonna do that because I want you just to see kind of the um, the format or the, in its, or sorry, like the interference pattern in its pure format. Let's add a second source, okay? Now I'm gonna actually move these so that they are um, side by side, because this is how the, this is the pattern that we're going to learn. So now if I have two sources of a wave that have exactly the same frequency, so they're gonna have the same wavelength, and essentially they're a certain distance apart, that distance doesn't really matter much, then this is what happens. They both produce waves, and then look at this. <laughs> so this is the mesmerizing, uh, you know, Incredibles 2, um, you know, mind manipulation pattern or whatever. But uh, I'll pause that. What happens is a very fascinating symmetrical pattern. What we have is interaction between the crests and crests and troughs and troughs, and you get areas of amplification like where a crest meets a crest, uh, we call that uh, constructive interference, as you as we already remember. And where crests meet troughs, we call that destructive interference. Um, here, let me let me clear that and show it again from the side because it does kind of help to see it from the side. So you can see what's happening now. There's a really cool. It's almost like an eggshell effect. Let me just slow that down. Um, where you can see areas where the crests are very pro are very prominent, but then there's like areas in between these crests where, um, like if you can see my cursor right here is um, kind of the halfway point between both sources, both point sources. We're going to call that a maximum, and it's actually called the central maximum because it's right in the center. We'll label all this later. Um, but right there, you have an area of where crests are meeting crests and troughs are meeting troughs. But you'll get an area of amplification. Now, just off to either side, there's an area right in between the um, areas of constructive interference where there's destructive interference. This is where a crest would meet a trough. And effectively, because they're the same frequency, they cancel out. And so you get an area of where the medium is at equilibrium and it just kind of comes out in rays from kind of the central area where they're um, interfering with each other. And so uh, we get an area of either, we could, we could say nodes or we could say areas where there's, um, where the energy is being canceled out. So what I want to show you is on uh, this, I've posted this in your notes. This is actually what I'm showing you in the notes here um, for a, um, for a two source interference pattern. This would obviously just be one source um, producing concentric circles. This would be the two source interference pattern. Okay. Now it can get a little complex, but it's just a really cool um, symmetrical pattern. And we're going to analyze this pattern to understand um, what's happening to the waves, okay? So this is basically the breakdown 
and uh, I've only labeled half of the double on this drawing. I've only labeled half of the two source interference pattern. And we're going to introduce you to these two terms. They're called maximas and minimas. Now that's plural. Maximas or a maximum happens where crests meet crests and troughs meet troughs. And here in this one, that's all the dark, or that's the solid lines. So this one here is called the central maximum. Okay. Uh, actually, I should probably label that. Instead of saying CM, that might think it's centimeters. So it's called the central maximum. And that's happening right here. And then immediately to the right of that, there's a, an area of destructive interference. It's the first one. We call that the first order minima. Okay. So I'm maybe going to just label that right here. And um, if you, I mean, these are pretty easy to keep track of. That's the first order minimum. Um, but the first order maximum is this guy. So, and then the pattern continues. Okay, so we have the first order maximum and then the second order minimum and then the second order maximum and on and on and on. Okay, and they just move outwards. But if, uh, I think you can easily, you can see here where crests meet crests, okay? So here it's where we have an intersection, okay? We have a crest meeting, the crest from source one is meeting the crest from source two and on and on. That would definitely be a maximum. Where the crest meets a trough is in this location here. So along, along the dotted line, um, we have a crest from, you know, this source meeting a trough from the other. Okay. So I, I know there, there gets to be a ton of lines when you start analyzing this, but uh, I don't think the pattern's outrageous as long as you can just understand what you're seeing. Okay, so I did compress this down here. Um, the maximums, this is like we said, crests and crests, troughs and troughs. We call it a maximum displacement from equilibrium. I should have added one more word here now that I think about it. Um, we should have added the word anti-node. Okay, we could call these anti-nodes, sorry. Um, because these are areas of constructive interference. The waves are considered to be in phase. And as we'll see here, um, the uh, I probably should have added this too. We'll add it to both of them. Um, in fact, you know what, let's just, let's just add it like this. Um, we'll say uh, the pathway difference. So um, this pathway difference will make sense when I show you in the, in the next picture, okay? So, and here, let's just tuck that down here just a little bit, okay? So, and we'll also put it um, down here. Oh, except that's not gonna work. Oh, there it is right there, yeah, okay. So, um, oops. So the pathway difference here it's whole wavelengths. And uh, basically, if you have a, an, uh, sorry, the pathway difference is the difference from the first source to the second source. I'll explain that in the next diagram. Um, but for, uh, for maximums, okay, or maxima is plural, right? The waves are considered, they're considered to be arriving in phase. Um, they're called antinodes. And the pathway difference associated with where this intersection is would be whole wavelengths, whole numbers of wavelengths. Um, the opposite happens on the minimums. And this is where crests meet troughs or troughs meet crests. Um, if the waves have the same wavelength, they'll just cancel each other out at equilibrium. We would call that destructive interference which would correspond with a node. And we would say that the waves are considered to be out of phase, which means the pathway difference is half of a wavelength, or you're out by half a wavelength, okay? So we have the idea of whole wavelengths for constructive interference 
and half of a wavelength for destructive interference. Okay, so let's kind of build on that just a little bit because it still is maybe a little fuzzy in what it looks like. This here is the diagram that I will be using on all questions that deal with um, two source interference. Okay, so I will not use any other pattern. I won't make it any more complicated than this. Um, the idea is that you have two sources. We've got a source right there and a source right there source one and source two. They are four wavelengths apart. I'll do a bunch of erasing here so you can see this, but yeah, the four wavelengths here, if you can follow, um, there's one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths, four, okay? So they're four wavelengths apart. I'm gonna get rid of that though, because I wanna draw some more on here. So um, what I wanna draw your attention to are these lines here, K through R, okay? Um, Let's label these just quick, and you probably will make sense of this. N, sorry, is the central maximum, okay? It's right in the middle between both sources, and it's where you would find constructive interference. The, the, um, if you pick any point on that line, like say this point here, um, you could count how many wavelengths you are away from source number one and how many wavelengths you are away from source number two. And that number would be exactly the same. See? So uh, see from source one, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six wavelengths. And from here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six wavelengths. Okay? So there, the pathway difference, that's what I mean by pathway difference. Um, it's uh, zero. So because they're the difference between the two pathways is zero. They're the same distance apart. That's why it's called the central maximum. So let's get rid of all of that now. And let's go to the right, though, first. On, to the right here, line P, you might guess this. This is the first order maximum. And uh, Q would be the second order maximum. And R would be the third order. Okay, so they're all maximums. And uh, the numbers, one, two, and three, should give you a clue as to how many, what the pathway difference is in terms of their wavelengths. So let's just pick, let's pick line Q just for an example, and let's pick this point right here on line Q. Okay, so what we do is you say, well, from uh, from source number one, there's the, that's the, the, um, the distance from source one to that point. And here's the distance from source number two. Okay, those are that's the, the physical distance. Then if you count the number of wavelengths from source one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six wavelengths. And from source number two, it is one, two, three, four wavelengths. So six wavelengths and four wavelengths. The difference between those is two wavelengths. And lo and behold, when you're on line Q, what that corresponds to, maybe we'll just change that here, is two wavelengths. It's a pathway difference of two wavelengths. Um, no, it doesn't matter where you go, right? On the, you could, we could measure a different point. We could come out here and measure this point, and you could do the same analysis. Okay, measure from here to here and from there to there, and you would get a pathway difference still of two wavelengths. Okay, so. Um, let me just erase all that. So the pattern on the on the maximum side is pretty straightforward um, because the path what in, what you should remember is line P is a pathway difference of one wavelength, line Q is two wavelengths, R is three wavelengths, and if we add more, you just keep going. Okay, so one, two, and three. Now. Obviously, if you if you remember back up here, well, it's maybe not that obvious, but uh, there's so many maximums and minimums. If you labeled every single one of them, it'd be insane. It'd just be this mess of lines. So in the in the one that I give you, I only measure the maximums on the right, and I measure the minimums on the left. Okay, and it's kind of it's maybe I don't know how obvious it is, but you have to look at it carefully. If we pick line M for example, let's pick say this point right here. And I'm picking points where um, that are on line M, if you will. Okay, so on line M, um, I'm 
if I measure the distance from source two to that point and then measure the distance from source one to that point. Um, and I count the number of wavelengths, okay? So doing that gives me from source one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six and a half, okay? 6.5 wavelengths. And from source number two, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven wavelengths. So anyway, I don't think you're too surprised here. The pathway difference is half a wavelength. I have to travel an extra half a wavelength from source number two to get to this point, to get to this intersecting point right here, okay? So that means that anywhere on line M, I'm going to have a pathway difference of 0.5 wavelengths, okay? And that's what will produce the destructive interference that we were discussing earlier, okay? So a crest will meet a trough, and you'll get on that, in that region, you're going to get destructive interference or a whole bunch of antinodes, okay? Line L, we could do the same analysis here. Whoops, sorry. But it would be 1.5 wavelengths and line K would be 2.5 wavelengths, and so on, okay? So um, a lot of students just, as you're learning this, they kind of half memorize these, because K, L, and M is two and a half, one and a half, half, and then line P, Q, and R is one, two, and three. And that, that, that's as basically as far as I'd want you to know the, the pattern. And I'm only gonna give you this pattern, okay? Just to help you understand this phenomenon. So, what kinds of questions could I ask? Well, there's lots of things, there's lots of ways we could ask questions, and I'm gonna give you a couple. Um, in fact, let me just clear this off and we'll do one right now. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave, leave you a couple others. Because if, you know, um, if you know the frequency or you know the, um, the wavelength, then um, you can find a bunch of things. So you can find the speed of the wave, you could find um, the wavelength itself, frequency, whatever you need. So let's just do one line here. This says, uh, then this is actually what the first question on two source interference in the practice questions I'm giving you. So I'll just do it with you. It says a line on point K is measured to be 5.2 centimeters farther from S2 than it is from S1. If that's the case, what is the wavelength of the waves in the pattern? Now remember, obviously in a two source interference pattern, um, the wavelengths are all going to be the same. So it says it's on line K. Well, you know what? What's, if you really want to um, uh, map this out, you can. If some of you are working on remembering that this that line K is two and a half wavelengths, meaning the pathway difference is two and a half wavelengths, let me show you how that corresponds to this length here of 5.2 centimeters, okay? So it's... Um, and what's awesome here, it doesn't matter wherever you do this. Let's, let's pick this point right here, okay? I'm going to pick this point on line K right there. Okay, so this, inter this is a line, uh, it's an intersect, it's a line um, or where one of the crests is crossing line K. So in effect, what it's saying is we could, we could measure from source number one to that point, and we could measure from source number two to that point, and if we just counted wavelengths like I've been doing, um, we should get a pathway difference of 2.5. Let's just confirm that. So this is one, two, three, four and a half, 4.5 wavelengths from S1. From source number two, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven wavelengths, okay? So the pathway difference there, 7 minus 4.5 should equal 2.5, which it does, okay? So what it's really saying is this. If from source number one, if I go four and a half wavelengths, that will, um, you know, that'll obviously get me to my target. Let me change colors here. But what if I went um, four and a half wavelengths from source two, okay? So that would be one wavelength, two, three, four and a half, okay? So if I went that distance from source number two, it would only get me to, to that part, okay? I would only make it to right here, but that's not the full distance. 
So what it's saying is you, the um, the point on line K is measured now to be 5.2 centimeters farther from source number two. So guess what? That's like saying from right here to the intersecting point, from that, that point to this point here, you can see that, that distance is 5.2 centimeters. Okay, if you can visualize that. So that extra distance is 5.2 centimeters, but here's um, what's helpful if you remember the pathway difference. I know we did all this analysis, but if you just remember the number, this 5.2 centimeters is going to be the same as two and a half of the wavelengths, okay? Because look, there they are. Here's one wavelength, there's two wavelengths, there's a half. That distance there is two and a half wavelengths. So if I measure it, and I know exactly what it is, it's actually a length of 5.2 centimeters. I know that's going to correspond anywhere on line K. Like it doesn't matter. I know, we, I know we did this intersecting point right here. We could have picked another intersecting point on line K, line K and it would still work. So here's this, that's what I meant at the beginning. This is kind of complex when you start to break it up, but the math is crazy easy because here it is right here. I have 5.2 centimeters is equal to two and a half wavelengths. If I divide the right-hand side by 2.5, divide the left-hand side by 2.5, I get a wavelength of 2.08 centimeters. That is the wavelength. And what's cool about that analysis is, yeah, that's the wavelength between any two crests in the pattern, okay? So that's this distance here. That's two and a half wavelengths. Um, there's two and a half wavelengths. This is two and a half wavelengths and so on. Anywhere in the pattern, the wavelength will be two, sorry, 2.08 centimeters, okay? So that's just setting you up to, to to basically determine the wavelength accurately from a two source interference pattern. If you were to um, get the wavelength, then you could probably find other things. Okay, so most of it's tied to the universal wave equation. If you got the wavelength correct, and let's say you knew what the um, you know what the knew what the velocity was, you could solve for the frequency. Or, you know, vice versa, you could solve for the frequency if you knew the, um, or sorry, you could solve for the velocity if you knew the frequency, and then you determine the wavelength from a two-source interference pattern. So anyway, uh, I hope that's helpful. Again, uh, take your time processing it. The big takeaway, though, from this, in my opinion, is just remembering um, oh, I already erased them, sorry. Remembering these numbers across the top. If you do that, then this pattern's pretty easy to, to analyze. So again, just to end with here, we have two and a half wavelengths, 1.5 wavelengths, 0 0.5. This is the central maximum. One wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths. So again, if you're out by half a wavelength, you're going to have destructive interference. If your pathway difference are whole numbers of wavelengths, then the waves are going to arrive in phase, okay? And you're gonna make uh, constructive interference. So anyway, hope that's helpful. Um, and let me know if you have any questions with that. Keep up the good work, you guys.